Hello, my name is Nils O'Donoghue and I'm a member of our regulatory team here at Chadwick Lawrence. Uh, I want to discuss some really important changes which are taking place next month uh, to a regime uh, known as IR35. Uh, this may be something you've heard about uh, in the press but have, have yet to action. Uh, hopefully this video explains what IR35 is, um, if it applies to your business uh, and if it does uh, what you have to do as a result of the changes that are upcoming. Um, IR35 was due to change uh, last year in April 2020. Quite wisely, that was um, delayed by the government uh, for a year, and so the change has come in early April uh, 2021. So there's not a great deal of time uh, between this video and the updates that are coming in, but hopefully um, this video gives you a very basic understanding of what IR35 is, um, what changes that you may need to do, and also what the consequences of it potentially are. In respect of who IR35 applies to, it will apply to medium and large organisations that are engaging with workers or contracts or contractors, sorry, um, by what is known as an intermediary. So it may be, for example, that you have a worker or contractor uh, supplied by an agency. It may be that you have a worker or contractor um, that is supplied by a limited company or personal service company of that particular worker. Or it may be that you um, have a worker or contractor that is um, supplied by a partnership. Um, if any of those scenarios um, are applicable to you, it is highly likely uh, that you will have to conduct some work uh, regarding the changes that IR35 uh, is bringing in. And effectively, what you will need to do is work out if that particular individual that is being supplied by that intermediary is um, self-employed or employed um, for tax purposes. I think there's two strands to IR35 that need to be tackled, one on a long-term basis uh, and one on a short-term basis. Starting with the long-term plan, I think it's important that businesses do have policies and procedures that they will put in place so that when they engage with a contractor or worker, they are assessing at that contractor or worker for IR35 purposes from the outset. That, however, uh, is a longer-term goal. The shorter and uh, more critical goal, uh, if you haven't already, is to assess those workers and contractors that you are currently engaging with, um, bearing in mind that the rules in relation to IR35 change in April 2021. In terms of what this means, um, you are going to have to work out, as I said earlier, if a particular worker or contractor is employed or self-employed uh, for tax purposes. And one of the ways you can do that um, is by using HMRC's um, online tool, which is known as CEST. Um, that is a tool which allows you to answer a series of questions and then a determination in HMRC's view uh, and using that tool uh, is then given to you uh, at the end. That is a piece uh, of um, resource that has been criticised. Um, it's obviously very difficult to be able to uh, use such a tool um, in each individual circumstances, uh, but there have been updates um, to that test tool uh, which have made its operation somewhat better. It is important, however, you're ensuring that you answer those questions honestly and accurately uh, in order to get the most accurate uh, result. Um, if someone uh, is deemed to be um, employed for tax purposes, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you are the person or business that is directly paying um, the intermediary, so it could be the personal service company, for example, that is supplying that worker or contractor, then you should make PAYE and national insurance contributions deductions before paying um, that particular personal service company in respect to the services provided. So that um, particular worker would be treated as an employee for tax purposes. It's important that you assess whether you are actually uh, the fee payer, um, as it is known as under IR35, uh, in any given situation. So it may be, for example, that you use an agency who supplies a worker to you, but they may be deemed employed um, for tax purposes when you do your assessment. In that circumstance, it may be that it is the agency that is paying the intermediary. And in those circumstances, it would be the agency that would need to deal with the PAYE and the national insurance contributions. Um, if you do um, find yourself in the position where you are the fee earner, you should also make sure that you account uh, yourself for the employer national insurance contributions and potentially the apprenticeship levy. So in terms of going forward, um, there is quite a lot of work to do in respect of IR35. It's also important that you put the policies and procedures in place um, for assessing workers and contractors 
who come into your business to provide services post um, April 2021. I would also recommend that you review um, the agreements that you have um, with workers, contractors and their intermediaries um, in respect of IR35 to ensure that they are up to date uh, and IR35 compliant. It is important that the contract you have with the intermediary um, is uh, fully up to date uh, and um, most compliant with the uh, current legislation. I hope this quick video has helped. Uh, IR35 is an extremely uh, complex area of law and if you do require any further assistance, uh, please do contact us here at Chadwick Lawrence. Thank you.